now Jeff has just shared his screen. I have it open in here, but I don't know. And um, and I hit it and I feel like it should say yeah here at the bottom. So okay, so yeah, if you click up on that, no, um, X out of that. Okay. Now go over to share again and hover over it. Okay, are you the host or the co-host? I think I am the host. Okay, go to your participant panel. So um, click right here. Okay. Okay. And I think it's because nobody's in the meeting right okay. now. Okay. But when there is, there'll be a little up arrow here mm -hmm. and it'll say allow people to share. Okay. And you can do that. And then also, can I take your mouse? Of course. If you go here on people's names and you do more, this is where you will be able to make them a host or a co-host. Okay. It doesn't say that because it's you right now. Okay. But it'll you can click up here more and host or co-host. That's also where you would remove somebody. Okay. But usually, and I think, let me, let me go ahead and get into this meeting. Okay. Is, is this the main meeting for this thing? This is Jeff's. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll session. get in real quick and then okay. you'll see where you can share it. Okay, perfect. So now that I'm in, you mm -hmm. should have an up arrow next to your share. Okay, we do not. Um, I'm real confused. Did you set the meeting up? No, Molly did. So you, so the only thing that's gonna, she's gonna have to be in to let you do that. But if you're co-host, mm -hmm. all you'll need to do is go over here to me, mm -hmm. click more. And then make co-host and then he'll okay. be able to share that okay so so once you make him co-host well you're having the ability to make me the host so that's what i'm confused about. Mm -hmm. hold on let's go to share click up this one well let me just try something yeah, sorry of course. i just need to click around it may be within your Zoom settings on the web. They okay. You need to select that. Let me go and look. Okay. And it sure. won't work for this meeting. For this meeting, just make them a co host. Okay. Okay. But usually there's a small little arrow down there and it says share screen simultaneously, allow for the, do you know, like allow people, and then yeah. you just up click that and select it. So, okay. but if you make him the host or the co host, okay. he'll have sharing capabilities. So I'll go to participants to do mm -hmm. that. Okay. Uh -huh. And just uh, do click on his more when he's uh -huh. here and make him yeah. a co host. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And it looks like we can even make him the host. So okay. if it's still not working, just make him the host. Okay. And then he'll, he'll however his Zoom setup will, will allow him to do that. Okay, perfect. Thank you.
Good morning. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, so I am going to make you a co-host. Perfect. And so I think that will allow you if you want to practice and see if you yep. can share your screen. Let me do what I would show. Let me kind of close some of this stuff out. This would be the first thing and let me... Uh, there's no real computer sound, so <laughs> perfect. Can you hey. see this little email? I can, yes. Perfect. So I'll be able to roll from everything then. Okay, good, good, good. Awesome. Thank you. We're so appreciative of you doing this. I'm excited. You're desperate to have me, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Not hardly. Good morning, Suzanne. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Where's your Star Wars outfit? I know. Yeah, I know. Oh, I should have it. See, my wife is doing the work at home today thing. So I guess uh, her reputations, she wasn't here. Her reputation wouldn't be online like it is with mine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but we did do a, and, you know, it almost broke the marriage as usual. But, uh, and I'm sure you've done this before, but uh, we spent Labor Day weekend making my son's room from whatever, the toddler room to a big boy room. Mm -hmm. and so we painted all that, but then got some of those um, fathead Star Wars um, decals for his room. So now it's an official star wars one and the only thing i guess we have to do i'll take a picture it's pretty cool uh cindy got a great idea and it's not like off one of those hg shows because i don't think they do these things but uh as a kid he has all those you know different outfits and costumes he would wear you know star uh -huh. stormtroopers or whatever mm -hmm. so we still have them but they would never fit him he's so big and so we kept all the helmets so we have a wall that's like the bounty hunter and you know, stormtrooper helmet wall, you know. What so. a great idea. She came, she's good on that. So it's cool. That is so fun. Wow. I'm so it'll be interesting. How, how many people have signed up? I two? honestly do not know. I know there was one or two from the college that said they were going to be there, which kind of threw me off, which is cool. Mm -hmm. You know, we have um, seen our attendance all over the place. Have uh, you already? We really have. So I, I think it depends on how people are feeling and yeah we've seen everything from five to 60. Really? Yeah cool. so I, I think that's exciting. Yeah I mean it's well when you're going to 225 every day you know I don't want to know what to do with 60. That's, You'll be fine. <laughs> it's like a family dinner yeah. <laughs> Hey, Jeffrey, I do want to tell you that I have another commitment, so I won't get to stay for the whole time, and I'm sorry for that. Oh, it's okay. Uh, Mitzi I'll will be here. here. Yeah. So I'll wait and do all the controversial stuff. When, when are you leaving? I'll make sure I say all that. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you just won't even know. I am not Maybe I'll be this. here. Maybe I won't. You know, I guess when I have all these kids, you're never like looking at yourself so big on this screen. Now I'm like, this high def isn't the way to go. It kind of shows everything on the high def camera, you know? A little bit more gray hair than I had thought. Actually, I should mess with the lighting. How are you this morning, Suzanne? I'm good. good. I'm good. How about you? Good. Yeah. So now that everyone's back, I'm finally maybe, maybe this afternoon, I'm going to move everything from my privacy of the master bedroom to our dining room and move. Again, I'm going to figure, you know, when I first started working, I had an office with no windows at all. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of get that feeling in here. So I think I'm going to move to like the formal dining room where I can at least have natural light and a window to look out on. Oh, nice. It's kind of interesting when you start, you know, I've never taught online like I have this way before. And there's some cool perks, but there's also, you know, some learning that's taking place for sure. Absolutely. I feel like every week I'm messing with my lighting or, you know, where I am, which room yeah. in the house or whatever it is. 
I think for me, I'm mostly looking at all my students' backgrounds and like, man, they got a nicer place than mine. Oh, there's a heckler. I knew there'd be some hecklers from the college coming in. She's the primary one right there. There's a Rawls showing up for you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, she's probably got a long list of questions. I have no doubt. Good morning, Kristen. How are you? Let's see if she's still connecting. Maybe. Yeah, she is. Yeah. I think she's connected now. Yeah, she's unfortunate. Her office is by the elevator, so I always keep her from doing her work when I come into the building. <laughs> no, I enjoy having people to talk to. It's kind of sad and lonely up here right now. <laughs> I plan like next week to start trying to come maybe once a week or whatever. I always say that, but just with COVID the way it is, there's like no point in it really at this mm -hmm. point, you know? Other than, of course, I get to see and give you a hard time, you know. Right. No, Not I just... totally get it. If I was virtual, I would probably be at home, too. Yeah, it's, uh, it's different for sure. I'm waiting. I'm looking forward to face-to-face. -to -face. Are you face-to-face -face again in the spring? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm for spring back to online for this, you know, we'll see what happens in the fall, hopefully. Mm -hmm. If not, I'm probably just see if Cindy can, my wife can let me do it from the arena. Yeah. That'd be cool. Kristen, how's your face-to-face -face class going or classes? I mean, they're good. They're fine. I mean, they're good. And yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, it's just different. And, you know, a lot of them have other virtual classes, so they're still not coming to class but mm -hmm. you know that's you know it's their choice which is fun, you know, yeah. which is fun. I think grades are suffering like mm -hmm. across the board but that's kind of on them I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I always laugh Kristen about um you're saying uh you know grades are suffering or whatever I, mean, I find it so interesting in that and that maybe this happens to you but like you know five hours after my class, I'll have like six kids all of a sudden attend the Zoom meeting. And I'm like, why are you showing up five hours after class? You know, do you get that at all? Showing up, trying to show up late? Well, because for tax, I'm just recording it all through media side. You know, I've always done it that way anyway. So I, they're just watching it after the fact. But that seminar class I have, that one has been virtual. And I mean, I send them calendar invites. Like, I don't know how hard it is for them to miss. And I'll have people that'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. I was unaware we had class. <laughs> right. I get that a lot, too. <laughs> so uh, this is only like whatever, the sixth week or seventh week. Yeah. And we've been doing this three days a week at well, the same we time. Like on mine, meet three times, which does make it a little harder. But at the same time, I'm like, I just sent you a calendar invite. Like, nobody sends me a calendar invite to like do my job. You know what I mean? To me, it's their job. So, yeah. but it's fun. It should be. Yeah. I was uh, laugh on these, my online classes. I'm always like looking at the students background. I'm like, God, they have a nicer place than I do. You know, like 30% of them, you know? <laughs> but I'll try to get up there next week to give you a hard time. Okay. You know, make sure you're gone that week. Right. Well, we're glad to see folks starting to join and come in the room. Welcome. Jeffrey, you're going to have a great crowd. You are. That's cool. Oh, hey, Michael, how are you? Another heckler from the college. That's awesome. <laughs> the Rawls <roles> following. <laughs> yeah. Now they just saw the announcement. They're like, oh, yeah, I've got questions. <laughs> Jeffrey, I think we'll, we'll give it just a couple of minutes, you know, to let people come in the room and get situated. Yeah. And then Mitzi's going to introduce you and we'll get started. Perfect. All righty.
you want us to be sure to say that we asked you to wear a Star Wars costume and you didn't do it? Yeah, there you go. We declined that invitation. Well, my son was a little bit bigger. I could fit into some of his. It's close. How old is your Star Wars fan? Uh, my son, ooh, he's like 10, but he, weird, he's, we just measure him. So, Christian, you know, like this, we did that wellness check, 5'4 mm -hmm. and 140 in the uh, fourth grade. So, it looks like he's been in the fourth grade for like five years now, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's sad he can start taking my clothes, um, which I don't know what to think of that. <laughs> Yo, hey, Michael, how are you? His picture's way down right behind my camera. That's cool. Jeffrey, I feel like we have a great start here. So I think we'll go ahead and get started and Missy is going to introduce you this morning. Wonderful. Well, good morning, everyone from the TLPDC. We are thrilled to have such a great, a great crowd um, this morning. And we want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us. We're really thrilled to host this session today led by Dr. Jeffrey Harper, Professor of Practice from the Rawls College of Business. And this um, series is part of the Commitment to Teaching series, which is co-sponsored by the Teaching Academy and the TLPDC. And Jeffrey's gonna talk with us today about the topic of making a class of 250 feel like 25. So we will let him take it away. Jeffrey, thank you so much. Perfect, well, thank you all so much for having me. I've never done one of these before, so I was actually a little bit nervous. Um, I do teach in the Rawls College and it's kind of a unique situation for me. This is my 24th, fourth year, I believe, at the university, and I was hired as an administrator. So I've been an administrator, a full-time instructor, and now most recently an assistant professor of practice. Um, I think it's kind of important probably to go over my little bit of that background, how I got into teaching. So when I was initially hired, I was in charge of our creating a study abroad program office in the Rawls College. We didn't have one of those. So that's what I was tasked with, creating those and managing those. And um, I guess after my first year, I was in 90, I think the fall of 1997, it was 4.30 in the afternoon on a Friday, our dean at the time, Roy Howe, had somebody bail on him for teaching classes on Monday, and he was out there, he was a smoker, smoking, I guess trying to figure out what was he going to do, and I happened to walk by, and he asked me, hey, will you uh, teach uh, introduction to business class for me, and I said, sure, no problem, right, and went into his office and he gave me um, a book. And at that time, it's so long ago, it was those transparencies. I don't know if any of y'all remember the transparencies, but all those transparencies. And I asked him, you know, what do I need all that for? It's just the first day of class. I mean, aren't I just gonna like hand out the syllabi for you? Because he, you know, that time the Dean taught the class and I knew he was probably out of the office fundraising or something. And he said, no, I need you to teach the class for the semester. And I think he could see the fear um, overwhelming me a little bit and said, but don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to give you uh, an extra $1,500. And I think at the time my salary was like $26,200. So I mean, I was like, wow, you know, $1,500, I'll do it for sure. Right. Grabbed it. And he uh, put his arm around me. And never forget, this is all the teaching that I got from him uh, in instruction. He put his arm around me and said, remember, it's a sizzle, not the steak shoved me you know, gently shoved me out the door and then locked the door and i was just puzzled like what do i do i had no training and so luckily i ran up to dr lavery's office and i think many of y'all know who dr lavery is in our college um she's won all the teaching awards in our college and some national teaching awards does a lot with the teaching academy so i ran upstairs uh, picked her brain um got as much ideas as i could and then implemented that semester 
And our college, I guess, it wasn't always so good with communication. Well, at the end of the semester, I thought it went pretty good. Um, you know, I thought the students learned what they needed to learn. And it wasn't until two days before the semester started in the spring, I had a student come to my office asking what book I was going to use. And I was shocked. No one had told me I was still teaching. And so I kind of did what um, I had done the semester before. And then in those days, I know some of y'all probably remember those days, but we get the evaluations, the paper evaluations would get returned to us. So I received those in February and I opened them up and to my horror, it didn't go as well as I had thought in my mind. And um, by this point, Debbie was my boss. I went up there and I felt terrible. I felt that I had let her down. Um, I let my students down, which really was the thing that bothered me the most. I went up there to her office. I was real emotional. I started to tear up and I'm not an emotional kind of guy. She was a good boss. She said, you know, I was probably not as bad as you think and took these from me and went over them. And then she kind of chuckled and she said, um, you know, I don't know what you're thinking, but um, you know, you have a 4.88. That's like the third highest in the college and it leads our department. You know, you did really well. I thought it was a 10 point scale. No one had told me anything. And I was just, it couldn't believe that I was actually teaching with zero training. And so what I learned to do really quickly was to go to the people that I knew were good teachers in the college and just get the best practices for them. Um, Debbie and Bob McDonald brought me um, into the different training programs or the different seminars that the Teaching Academy had. And I always found I could get just one good thing from each one of those lectures and integrate them in my class. I hope that that's what you'll get in this class. So we're out of this little session. Um, traditionally, I have for the last 15 years been teaching um, the intro to business or sorry, intro to marketing classes, which is a required 3000 level course for all um, business majors in the college. Um, it's interesting. So enrollments usually are 245. So I have three sections of 245. Um, generally, I have zero TA help. I don't have anyone helping me with the class. So I've had to kind of think through how I could manage those many students and do it in a way where it's a very interactive type of class. I'm going to kind of just walk you through everything I do and feel free to interrupt and ask any questions. Um, I don't think that what I do is all that special. I know I'm not that special by any means, but I have seen that students do seem to really enjoy my classes. And I think the number one challenge with a course isn't the size of the course, but I think there's other people I've noticed here that also teach in the college that teach a required course. You know, 80% of the students do not want to be in my class. I mean, your accounting students do not, they circle that class. This isn't the one they do not want to take. There's no numbers involved in my marketing classes. And so that's a unique challenge. And I, I kind of thrive off that challenge of explaining to them, although this is a required class, it doesn't mean it's a it has to be a bad class. We can make this a good class. So um, I think what's really important is setting expectations. That's probably my main theme you'll hear me talk a lot about today is setting expectations from day one. So before the semester begins, um, like most people, I send them a email about seven to 10 days out. Um, this is a copy of the email that I sent out this semester. Um, I've traditionally taught all face to face. You know, obviously we all went online in the spring. Uh, my classes are so large, we don't have a large enough space in the college now to do mine um, socially distant. So I'm online and I've had to make a few adjustments, but I think um, everything that I do is very similar, works both ways, which is really good. So I sent out um, this kind of introductory email and I, I've modified this over the years. I've had a lot of help from um, Suzanne and Erica and others and a lot of some of the programs that I've taken part in through the Teaching Academy. And this has really helped me kind of have a refinement of this little email that I send out. But as you can see here, I just kind of explain, hey, we're going to start class soon. Um, here's the book. And What's most important, I think, is I explain, you know, pretty, I always try to be very honest and upfront about my class. You know, I've never really taught online. I might teach it face to face. And I explain why I'm going to do that. And I kind of explain um, my reason teaching face to face is I know that I'm effective in face to face. So I think I can be just as effective teaching it on Zoom in a synchronous manner. Um, and I'll kind of get into my attendance policy in here, but I do spell it out straight away. 
that they're rewarded for good attendance and poor attendance results in a 250 question comprehensive exam. So it gets them kind of um, thinking about that they probably do want to show up to class. Um, you know, I do explain that it's not my preference to be teaching online. I really do like face to face. Um, and I have this quote that I end every class with that, you know, life sometimes at times can suck, but when it sucks, you must learn how to embrace the suck. And that's why I tell them that we can make the best of this and we just have to deal with it. Right. Um, and then I kind of explain that I do teach somewhat in an orthodox manner and that the first couple of days of class are extraordinarily important to them. So then the next thing will be what I do on the first day. I so with this email, I do send them, um, if I have it ready, which is probably 50% of the time, I do send them the syllabus for the class, but I also sign them two assignments that are due the very first day of class. So they have to actually, um, in a face-to-face -face class, turn in a hard copy. Obviously online, they got to send a digital copy. And what it is, is um, what's called, a I call it a bio and a rules statement. And so one thing that I've learned is when you have a huge class of 250 students, you know, you have to have some ground rules. And if we don't have ground rules we can all deal with, then it gets out of hand. But I can't get through the material that they need for the test. It's just, it just doesn't work. So I have these rules that I email them. And these are kind of like, I think I've started to call them my nine commandments because you got nine of them here that they sign and date. And so you can see the first one, do not be distracted during class or distract others. And I give examples, you know, playing on their phones, Facebook, that kind of stuff. Explain to be on, on time to class. And you see, they don't want to disrupt others when they're in a big class. But now I've realized in Zoom, it takes away if I have to sit there and try to let people into class. It makes me stop getting through the material. So explain how important it is to be on time. Do not chat, text, or otherwise be distracted. Try to treat this as face to face I, and I have to kind of put this out there, you know, I expect them to be properly clothed and conduct themselves in a professional manner. So if they're in bed, I'll ask them to, you know, go to more professional setting. Um, you know, I do talk about the cheating and plagiarizing and what happens. Um, I think really important for my class is this idea about um, asking questions. So th I think the students in the roles, or at least in my class, they're very scared to ask questions and they're very afraid because they don't want to look dumb in front of their friends or whatever. And this will probably get me from never being ever getting to do one of these seminars again. But I try to when I go over this. I explain to the students that from this point forward, they're all equally dumb in my eyes and in their own eyes. Because of that, nobody can have a dumb question. Right. And I walk them through that logic. That if everyone's dumb, then Nobody can ask a dumb question. And how do we learn? We learn from our mistakes. And I make them a promise that if they give me the wrong answer, I'm never going to tell them that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I may say that's not what I'm looking for. And I'll give them a hint to try to get them to that correct answer. Um, but after the first week of class, people get into that and they feel they're not threatened. They have no problems asking questions and they have no problems making mistakes, which is really good. But I spend a lot of time on that one about why it's important to ask questions. Um, Jeffrey, course, we have a, a question in the chat about your policy on cameras. Do you require cameras to be I on? do require cameras. And I know that's kind of one of those things that people are debatable about or whatever. Um, I guess the way I treat a lot of this, uh, my class in philosophy is a lot of students think college is on the job training and it is and it's not right. I mean, as soon as they get out of my class, they're going to be going through a training and learning really what they need to know, know about marketing. But I try to get them to understand that I'm going to train them how to be professional and what the expectations in the workplace is. And so I do require them to have cameras that way I know that they're there. But the reason I do the cameras and just kind of like this setting is, um, and I'll get into it when I'm doing my lectures, but when I lecture, I, I do everything that you're not supposed to do. I read the PowerPoint slide word by word to them. And so when I read that first line, I'll read the line and then I'll ask the students to give me a question. So I'll just read that line and let me give you an example. I have um, tomorrow's lecture up here. And so we're talking about segmentation methods. So there's these four methods, geographic, demographic, psychographic benefit. So geographic, I'll say, okay, 
Um, Shelly, um, what does geographic mean? When you, think, when you hear that word geography, Shelly, what does that mean? Sorry to put you on the spot, but. Oh, her microphone's not working so good. How about you, Heather? Can you help me out? Can you see the word geography? Place on the map. <laughs> right, exactly. Place on the map. And then I said, well, then, you know, you think about Texas. How are we organized geographically in Texas? And I'll walk them through that, like, United or HEB will organize Texas geographically. So we have West Texas. You have... Um, South Texas, Central Texas, the Gulf Coast, North Texas, obviously is Dallas, which whoever made this map didn't know anything about geography because we're far north of Dallas, but we're in West Texas, right? And that's what I do. So I'll just ask them. And so that's why I have the cameras on because after I read one thing, I'm asking them to give me an example of that. And so that's why I require um, the cameras. Um, students I know at first are, and I do let them know, hey, if you have an issue for whatever reason, you don't have a camera or you don't feel comfortable, you know, that is fine. I mean, as long as, you know, there's not like just one person on the camera in the class. So I, I think in my class tomorrow morning with 225 students, there's only five that don't have their cameras on. And so um, it's, you know, no, I haven't had any issues with that. So I do require um, the cameras. Do talk about the cheating and plagiarizing. And then uh, this is an important one. I tell them if they need to email me, they need to do so professionally. And if they can, through Blackboard. And a professional email, I kind of explain it to them. It's not, you know, an intro, a body, and a concluding paragraph. It's just, you know, Dr. Harper or Mr. Harper, I have a question, or Jeffrey, you know, and spell out what section you're, you're in but be professional in your emails. Don't be using emojis or other things because you're going to be expected in the workplace to send professional correspondences when you have questions or other things. And so once this, you know, um, they filled this out, this is the very first day of class, five minutes class, I pick it up. We go over these just like I'm doing with you guys. Um, you know, I do talk about don't email me asking what chapters are on the exam the night before or, is this going to be on the exam? And I tell them if they say that, ask that, I say it is now is usually my response if I respond, which I usually don't. And then a really important one, do not lie to me, be accountable for your actions, right? I mean, we all have had instances where we've overslept or not done something. I'll be much more lenient if you're honest with me and don't lie to me. And then I ask them, you know, with a show of hands, how many of you can live by these rules? And everyone, um, usually has our hands up. If not, I said, well, you've already signed this and sent it to me. So you've already told me you can anyway. So we're going to abide by these rules. Now, this is kind of bad, but in a face-to-face -face class, if I do catch somebody, because I, I walk around, I remember standing behind the podium. So I'm walking around the classroom all the time. So if I do see somebody Facebooking or whatever, I will call them out. And I have them have name tags, which I think is really important in my class because it's so big. I can't remember all of their names. So I have them use a table tent with their name and their major, um, because that way if they ask a question, especially accounting students, I try to then give them an answer that will make sense to their degree program as best I can. But then you know, if I see somebody Facebooking, I'd be like, hey, Kristen, um, I need you to leave the class. You're not gonna get the attendance points for today. I need you to leave because you broke the rule. And as she's picking up her stuff, I'll ask her, and I need you to tell me what rule are you breaking? And um, when we go through these rules, I explained to them, you know, I have a 10 year old son and if they can't abide by these rules and when I act like a child, I'll treat them like my son. And so I'd ask Kristen, you need to leave and she'd tell me what rules she broke. And it is embarrassing. I try not to be embarrassing if I, you know, to them. It doesn't happen often. It's, I think it's been 18 months since it's happened. But when it happens one time, nobody else will do it for two years. Everyone knows don't do that in Dr. Harper's class because they got called out on it. And so they kind of police themselves on that themselves. But um, it just allows us to get through what we need to do. And never really had an issue with um, having to call someone out on it because I guess they've known how not to do that. So we go through these rules. We've got it all done. That's usually first five or 10 minutes in the first day of class. And um, I probably should pull up my syllabus here just so you get kind of a feel. Um, so 
and this always, I get a lot of questions from students, but you can see this is my syllabus for the semester. You know, the first day is what makes a good class. And we talk about the class organizational design and expectations and assignments. So we don't even talk about the syllabus till the third day. And so they're not used to that at all. Um, so this is when we're doing the rules. And then the next assignment that I give them is a bio. And the bio is pretty straightforward. It's they, I send this document to them, they fill it out and bring it if it's face to face, a printed copy. I have them bring a picture of their choice. Um, and that's really useful because I'm really bad with names. So I need a name and a face so I can use this to see who it is. Um, going forward, I forget that many of the my female students are pretty smart about it. They use like a really good picture of themselves, but it doesn't look like what they look like in class at all. I need to tell them you need to bring, you know, wear a shirt, t-shirt, wear what you're going to wear to class so I can know who you are because, you know, you are did these ones. And then the guys are the exact opposite. They have pictures of them and their girlfriend, but they'll have their girlfriend cut out of the picture, right? You know? Um, but that's really useful for me to see that I'm having their name and then their major. Um, their hometown, I think, is kind of neat just to kind of learn. In case I'm ever on Jeopardy, I'll learn a little bit about where they're from. And then this is important, something interesting about themselves. Um, because this helps me know something about that student and helps me get to know that person a little bit better. And when something interesting about themselves, it's really helpful because I can then know now, I, I can remember that. I can't remember a picture, a, a student's name, but I can remember that something interesting about them when I see their name tag. Um, you know, do they work in town? You know, are they at a restaurant? Do they need to be worried about eating there or whatever? And do they like the class kind of thing? Um, and then this important goal for the class. And so uh, most often it's, you know, I'd like to make an A. Occasionally you'll get an honest student that says, I just want to get a C or whatever. I'm really big into goals. So I want them to think from day one about goals. And so a goal for the class. And then I have them do this, a personal goal for the semester, not related to school whatsoever. And then, you know, and I see Farazan's there. She's a management person. Um, you know, it doesn't do any good to have a goal if you don't have a plan to achieve that goal. So this is what they have to do. How do they achieve these goals? And for the goals for the class, they explain how they're going to do it. And then their personal goal. And then after, you know, so I collect all these in a face-to-face -face class, I pick them all up. And then I try to read all of these by the second class. So, I mean, that's literally 700 of them, you know? So I just get after it and read as fast as I can. Um, I have a copy of a, I just kind of picked the first one off the list. Um, this is a student, you know, currently, Ellen Neese Brockington, Information Technology, Dallas. So you look at this picture. See, this is not what she looks like in class at all, but she does a good job of doing a picture of herself. And this is cool. I mean, you know, Ellen Neese, I know who she is for two things. Now, I'm not a big basketball fan, but I think a lot of people would go, oh, wow, she, Le LeBron James is her uncle. That's kind of interesting. I think this number two is even more interesting, right? I eat bananas like corn on the cob because I don't like the texture of the inside. I remember that straight away. And that next day of class, when before class started, I'm kind of chatting with them. I said, do you, uh, on first dates, you probably don't eat bananas, do you? And she's like, no, no, I wait until way down the road before I eat a banana in front of a boy, you know, knowing my intricacies with the bananas. But it's really cool because now I can remember something about that person and it's in my head. Um, she tells me where she works. She wants to get a go an A in the class. And I think this is cool. This personal goal for her is to spend less time on social media. And then how she planned to do this, attend class every day for the class goal, read the textbook outside of class, take notes during the lectures. And then for a personal goal to only spend one hour on social media a day and find other things to do with their time. So it's really cool. I get that, I have it in my head. Um, and then after I collect these, I share mine with them. So I try to explain to students that whatever I make them do, I do as well. And so I have a picture of my wife. Some of y'all may know her. She works at the United Supermarkets Arena. She's the managing associate director there. Um, so I have my undergrad, you know, my undergraduate degree, my MBA, my PhD in hospitality administration, um, where I grew up. And then, you know, the, and I try to put some interesting things on here about my stuff. I both studied abroad as an undergraduate and graduate student, traveled to 54 countries, um, you know, just different things like to run other things so they can see me as somebody other than just their professor. 
Um, I get down here to, you know, work in the marketing department, obviously. And then goals for the class, to make this class engaging, interesting, and relevant, to exceed their expectations of the professor, and then for them to look back as one of the best classes they had during their undergraduate education, even though it is a required class. And then to receive a teaching award. I've never received a teaching award ever, and so that's always one of my goals as well. And so I spell that out. And then for a personal goal, um, to weigh 180 by our last day of class, that doesn't mean much. So what I do is I bring in the scale. And I know a lot of y'all think it's crazy, but I'll bring in the scale and I'll step on the scale and I have whoever's on the front row read out to the class what that weight says. So this semester it started with 197. So I got to lose 19 pounds by, or you know, 17 pounds by the end of the semester, right? And so, and it's cool because I don't think a week has gone past where I haven't had a student ask me, how am I doing towards my goal? It was like, well, my son's birthday was last week and we had too many donuts and cake, not so good, but I plan to get better this week or what have you. Um, the goals for the class, you know, I explained to always be prepared to use relevant practical examples and try to explain concepts in a way that's easy for them to understand. And then for my uh, personal goal to stay focused and to be disciplined, um, and then I give them a little bit of key success factors, you know, these four things, and then um, give them some different quotes to kind of live by for them to understand. And then this is where the magic is. So by this point in that first class, it's only a 50 minute class, we're down to, you know, we have about 30 minutes left. And I turn it over to them and I explain to them, I will answer any questions I want about my background, any, my, any personal question they have whatsoever. I will not ask it. I will not answer anything about the syllabus or about the class. This is important. It's for them to get to know me so they can trust me. And so we can have, build a relationship. And, you know, they usually squander the opportunity. They'll ask, you know, where's your favorite place you studied? Occasionally you'll get the smart student. I'll ask, have you ever been arrested or, you know, good stuff like that. Right. But that's the kind of the idea behind it is for them to ask whatever they want. And, you know, once the 20 or 30 minutes is up, you know, we're done with that first class. And, you know, I think then they have gotten to know something about me. And I think they've gotten to know me better than they know some other professors. So they know some unique things about me that others don't really know. Right. And so um, the second day of class, and this is and go back to my syllabus here, is this class organizational design. And so um, I forgot there might be management people in here. It's probably not really organizational design, but what um, I do next, is, and they're kind of confused because we're not going over the syllabus. They're thinking we should be going over the syllabus. But what we do here, it's really important, is I explain to them um, what we're going to do is they're going to explain to me what makes a good class from a student's perspective. So this is from my first class this semester. Um, so I write up here, I just you know, wrote on document, shared with them since it's online, what makes a good class from their perspective. So not only do they have to tell me what makes a good class, they have to explain to me how I do that. So they say transparency. And I said, okay, what do you mean by transparency? And I said that homework are related to the test. They don't like classes where you do homework, but it's not the same on the test. So I said, okay, perfect. Um, passionate. I say, you know, I want you to be passionate about the material. And so we go through these lists. So I, I just write these down until the, it's completely exhausted. So you see, communicate, willingness to help, flexibility, being present. Um, they really want me to be in the, you know, lecturing when I say I'm going to lecture. Weekly reminders. I um, mean, that's a big one. You know, it's kind of like um, what Kristen was saying early on before it started. Yeah, they always want us to do all these little things and explain them. That's usually not what I do, but okay, I can try to do weekly reminders. It's not something I've done before, but okay, I can, I can try to do that through Blackboard. They want me to be accessible. Um, they want participation and respect. And so we go through all these and once, you know, and there's no other ones to go on here. I say, okay, anyone else have any other suggestions that should go on this list? And when there's no more hands raised, then I say, okay, what do you think from my perspective, a professor's perspective makes a good class? So then I put them in my shoes and they develop this list. Attentive students, 
right? And so we talk about that engaged students. Okay, what do you mean by engaged, right? Students that are accountable, dedicated students, attendants, students that come to class, students that ask relevant questions, students that help themselves, which is good. That means that, you know, you read my emails that I send to you, those kinds of things. Read come, before coming to class and to be professional, right? So once I have all those done, then we go back to this again, and I explain to them from the student's perspective, these goals really are my goals, right? If I do these things, then they're telling me that this is a great class, right? And then we go down here to the professor's ones. These are the student's goals. If they do these things, then from my perspective, that is a great class. Right. And so then I take this and I put it up on my website or on Blackboard so they have this to refer to. And then after every exam, we refer back to these goals and said, okay, during and after your first exam, how's the class going? Are we, am I doing what I'm, uh, am I doing what you set forth? Is it me or is it you? Now, so far they're all saying it's them. You know, if we're not meeting the class goals, they're saying it's not your fault, it's my fault for not being prepared or whatever. And the very last day of class, we go over, that's all we do in the last day of class is kind of go over these goals again. Did we do this? And so um, this is probably the most important thing that I do, I think. This has really set the tone for the students. Um, and it, I think it kind of helps them really realize I really do believe them to be a partner in their education. That's both of us that's going to make it a good class. It's not just me alone. It's them and myself, right? So this usually takes one entire class because, you know, we got to go through what does each thing mean, right? What do you mean by attentive, that kind of stuff. So there's, you know, everyone's on the same page. And then on the third day, we finally get to the dreaded syllabus that they've all been just dying to get, right? And on the syllabus, it's a normal syllabus in many ways. Um, but I kind of spell out, um, and they get basically the same email I already sent about the particular class. Um, but, you know, your normal stuff, here's the Zoom meeting address, the book, that kind of stuff, um, the objectives of the class, the learning outcomes. This is the thing that they're most interested in, and this is where I am a little bit different. But I have students, um, for my attendance policy, it's really different. So what I do, because um, I don't want to teach in a class in the Rawls College, in the class of 250 and have five people there. That is, is so tough to do that. So I... I don't know. I, I motivate them. I don't know what you want to call this, but um, my attendance policy, I reward them for coming and I punish them for not. So basically this is what I do. If they have two or less absences, I add two points to their final grade. Simple as that. You and you can, uh, those two absences or whatever you want to miss. It doesn't matter. Don't send me an email while you're missing. You just, you get two of those. If as a class, we have 80% of the enrolled attendance every single class, we will not have a comprehensive final exam, which would be anywhere from 250 to 300 questions. And so it kind of has two things, a group reward, right? Everyone comes to class, you don't have a comprehensive final, but you also have an individual reward, right? And so those two points, and I have a lot of evidence from the last 20 years that 40% of the students in my class, those two points is a difference maker in the letter grade. And if, totally affects 40% of students. So they really like that. Um, now they do have one that's kind of different that occasionally shows up on my um, evaluations. And I don't know if any administrators really read those in the college because someone would have brought it up by now, but I also give them their birthday off. Um, if they have a birthday on the class day, they get that day off because, you know, that's the only day of the year that you're the king or queen of that day. And so if it happens to be a class day, they send me a picture of their driver's license. They don't have to come to class. And I always get one or two people saying that's the nicest thing. I appreciate it or whatever. And if, you know, my birthday is on a class day, I don't teach on that day because I've never taught. I never worked on my day uh, as in my career on my birthday. So it goes both ways. But they usually are sad because my birthday is in February. So it's fall and that doesn't happen for them. Right. So um, but you see here I have the two different ways that are going to be evaluated. Um, exams, um, so I have three exams. Obviously with a huge class, I have to do, um, you know, kind of Scantron types of tests, right? 
Um, and then they have um, each chapter that we do, they have a 20 question um, quiz that they do on Connect and all of those together um, equal a test grade. So um, we kind of go over the two different options. If they come to class and their friends come to class, then this is how you're evaluated. If so for, we have a couple of good questions in okay. the chat related to attendance first, um, how you go about taking attendance, and then do you incorporate any of that feedback from your students into your syllabus at all? Um, as far as attendance goes, or uh, in what way? Just, I think general, um, Mary was asking that, um, any of that feedback about um, goal setting, I think. Uh, Mary, is that what you were meaning? Yeah. Um, so after that, um, Mary, when we, when I have to always do that, that goal setting or whatever, that's, you know, I put it on the website and said, okay, this is, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. And now this is what I expect you guys to do. So it's not incorporated in my syllabus because I've already sent it out, but it is on my website and Blackboard. And it is a document we refer to probably three to four times during the semester. Does that answer it? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Then um, Molly, I wanted to know if how you go about taking attendance in person okay. and online. Okay, I'll tell you what, Valia. The best thing is on Zoom now, and this was such a life sin, the you know, the best lifeline I ever had. Um, when Erica Hurst this August showed me that in Zoom, you can run a report that will tell you who all was in the meeting and how long they were in the meeting for, right? And so every class I just now this semester, because um, it was being focused online, I did get a teaching assistant for the first time. I got somebody for 10 hours a week, which basically means I get somebody to be in my class to help allow them into, to run Zoom for me, just to allow people in. But I still don't have any help outside of my regular class. So my graduate assistant's just in my class with me when I'm in my Zoom session. But after every Zoom session, I um, will go to the report and it will send me a spreadsheet of all the students that were in that Zoom session. So I do make them uh, make sure when they do come in Zoom that they have, you know, like just how you have your name, Balia, they have your name, your last name. And, um, you know, because it's on Zoom in the past, when I was talking about I'd have table tents. I also have them put on Zoom what their major is. So you would say, you know, Valia, Antonia, from um, a finance major. And so I see that. And so that appears on the report. Um, now with everything on Zoom, I have had to be a little bit flexible. When face-to-face, -face, I'm not flexible. If you come in the last five minutes of class, you're not counted as being there. Um, what I would do the, in a face-to-face class, the way I track attendance is I would do it a variety of ways. One might be just a simple um, true-false or um, multiple choice question that I put up on the screen and then they write it down with their name and turn it into me. And then I would go and just, it's just completion grade, either you were there or you weren't there, right? Um, with Zoom, it's so much easier with that report. So I really love Zoom now because it's taken away me having to put it into a spreadsheet, right? But that's how I track it. Um, and so they see these two options and generally they wanna go with the uh, option one, which is no final, right? And so um, I just keep a track of the tests and then I do let them know that. Now, one thing that is kind of cool, um, it's not the same in Zoom, but in face-to-face -face classes, I can't tell you how many times um, before I started class, I will, you know, take, you know, I usually teach all back to back. So by my second class, I got to make a quick restroom break or get water or something. It happens almost once a week where there'll be students in the class and they're thinking there's not 80% students are there. And they'll be on their phones calling their buddies like, hey, get here. We don't have enough students. They don't want the final. And so it's really awesome. They police themselves. It's a really, um, I don't know, it works for me, I guess I would say, right? And so we kind of go just go through the syllabus. And this is the most important part, obviously, is the attendance. And then they kind of see what all we're going to, you know, they have the rules to refer to. And then they get the normal classes of what we're going to have when everything is taking place. And then I do put down here when the comprehensive final would be there if we were to have one, so they know. Um, and so that's kind of the, that third class is that syllabus. Okay, this is what we're going to do. 
And then as you can see, we get rolling, you know, we start with the uh, first section and go. Um, as I was kind of telling you earlier, I like to read the PowerPoints to them. Um, it's just the way I've been doing it for all these years. And uh, they seem to enjoy that, um, you know, because I'll ask a concept and then I'll ask them to explain it to me. Because I think the nice thing about marketing, we've been all marketed to all of our lives, right? I mean, every one of us has done marketing of some sort. Even if it was in elementary school selling stupid cups as a fundraiser or something, that is marketing. So they all have experience with the subject matter, which is really nice. And so it does allow that level of engagement and interaction because I can ask a concept and they may not know that they know the answer, but we can get to the answer. And so that's kind of what I do. And it's really, um, you know, I, mean, I think it's effective. I mean, I've got for like the last 18 years, my vows have gone, um, they go between a 4.7 to a last spring, got a 5.0 in one of these classes, which shocked me to death, right? In a large lecture. Um, what's odd though is I always teach usually like 10, 11, and 12. My 10 o'clock's usually a 4.9, 4.8, and then 4.7. So I get progressively worse over the day, but it hasn't changed for 15 years. It's crazy. I don't know why that is, right? But it does seem to be effective. And, um, you know, I know evaluations aren't the only way or the best way of saying is a class good or bad um you know it's the only way we do it in a college no one's ever really come in to observe my teaching other than other professors have come in to see what i do um, but one thing i think is unique even um, last spring in the summer if my enrollment's 250 students i'll have 185 comments from students and um, one of the big things, um, the very last day of class is, I guess, really the last important thing that I do that's a little different, and that is um, the last lecture. Um, and what we do is we go back over those goals. And did we achieve these goals? Did I achieve this? Did I make the class engaging? Did I do the things you set out for me? And personally, did you do this? And then I asked them, you know, this is really important. I said, how do I improve this class? Because by the time I get 